Hey guys, Wonklo here. I hope all of you are doing really well and having a really good day. In today's video, we do we want to take a look on the most recent release of XOS version 2.5.0. So let's get started and right into it. Before we actually do start, I need to excuse myself. Uh, sorry for this bad recording quality. I'm currently on a trip and not able to have a proper microphone with me. So nevertheless, let's quickly dive into what has changed. We do have a new big release and especially a critical fix for vulnerability. But before we dive into this vulnerability, let's quickly take a look on what has changed. We do have a small type of fix by B. Rowan and this is really lovely. Thank you, thank you for doing that. After that, we quickly did a check on the PSRAM on the self-test as well, which was implemented by me. After that, we do have a fix on the testing for the Stratum alternative error, which is a unit test by DDB3. It's awesome that you're doing more stuff on the unit testing side. We also do have a fix on the use this.uri for editing restarts by MRV777. So this affects actually, if you do a couple of restarts, using swarm functionality, this fixes issues on this end. As well as we do have a couple of instructions for development by PRIS, which is amazing. And now into the big thing. We do have figured out, and it was brought to us with an issue on GitHub, that we do are affected by the CSRF vulnerability, which means basically totally freaking me out. And that this is even possible these days is insane, but you never stop learning. So the CSRF vulnerability is basically a thing. You open up a web page, whatever you want to look at, and what web pages these days do, they do have lots of scripting on them to display you nice images or have a couple of animations or any other things. But what you can also do with these scripts or JavaScripts in there, you can do malicious stuff. And we figured out that you can do some sort of an injection where basically you visit a website, you do not see what's going on. And this website actually tries to look through your network and is looking for BitX devices. And if it does find some, it will actually change the Bitcoin address and maybe the pool or it doesn't actually change the pool. And then it will restart the BitX. So you just open up a web page and it changes the Bitcoin address of your BitX miner or any of these other miners that rely on the ESP-minor firmware and you don't even notice that because it does not show you this. So what Benjamin Wilson has been done the last couple of days was actually trying to figure out how we can fix this or patch this basically. This issue was pointed out to us from Seanography, as I said, with an issue on GitHub which was just amazing because we didn't even know that this issue existed and he pointed it out. He provided a proof of concept on how to do that. We tested it and we figured out, oh shoot, this actually works. You can inject other Bitcoin addresses on BitX devices just by the fact that people are visiting a web page and they don't even notice that. We do not have any records of people where this actually has happened, but it is a good approach that I need to tell everybody of you, if you do run a bit at home or anywhere else, there are a couple of things that you don't want to do. Basically, don't for your bit X. You don't want to be on a public Wi-Fi because everybody who does have access to the IP address of your bit X, then they will be able to access the XOS web UI and they are going to be able to change the Bitcoin address. So you don't want to use that. The next thing is what you also don't want to do is you don't want to port forward. Let's say, for example, you do have your BitX at home and you want to monitor it while you're on the go. At the first glance, it might look like a good idea that you just open up the port 80 or 443, in our case, just the port 80 to your BitX. And if you do know the IP address of your home network, then you can just go into the XOS dashboard from anywhere on the planet. But what this also means is that other people can do the same. So this is a bad approach. Don't do it. And then the last thing is, uh, yeah, going onto web pages and not seeing what kind of JavaScript is running on them is shady. And basically, there's nothing you can do about it because in the first glance, you don't actually see it, especially if you're not on the techie side or if you're, if you're not that deep into this kind of stuff. 
But it's a good thing that we are an open source project and that our people like Sonography are pointing out these things to us and that we do have enough programmers on this community that are capable of fixing things such as this. So let's quickly dive over to the XOS web page and let's quickly go over it. You do see nothing really has changed when we're taking a look on the UI. Everything kind of looks the same. Uh, we still do have our network and settings. So everything here is still the same. It's more or less this security vulnerability issue that we have fixed as well as with that, we had issues of using Swarm and we fixed that as well. So now everything should work as normal as usual and you shouldn't have any issues with using these devices any longer. I really do recommend everybody of you to actually do upgrade to the latest firmware version 2.5.0 and make sure that you don't do any of these don'ts that I explained to you previously. With that, I think that's a short update. We do have a couple of previous updates, but I don't think it's really necessary to go over the previous versions because now we are that far into it and more is to come. With that, I thank everybody of you for watching and tuning in today. Till then, see you next time.